Good morning and welcome back to another vlog. It is currently Saturday the 15th of January. It is pretty early in the morning because I have a nail appointment at nine. So finally getting these talons off. They are far too long now. But after I've had my nails done, I will just be heading out on a short morning walk to Dean Village. I'm gonna see if I can get my favorite cinnamon bun and basically recreate the scenes that you will have seen in my last vlog when I did this exact thing. Mainly because I have new walking slash hiking boots and I want to test whether they need wearing in before I go on any kind of longer walk. So I figured while I'm out and about, I might as well go for a little morning walk. So that's what I'm gonna do gonna make a coffee for the journey but I do need to dash off and I will tell you what I'm reading later on. So my plans to update you yesterday got a little bit derailed because I didn't really end up doing much until I went up with friends, so I just got completely sidetracked, but I did end up getting my nails done. Here's what they look like. We just have some black and pink claw action going on. <laughs> it's now Sunday. I am actually about to head out again because it is such a beautifully sunny day. I imagine a pretty chilly one, but like a good sunny cold day. So I'm gonna go for a walk towards the shore, which is like a pretty decent walk. And I haven't really been to the shore all that often since moving here, which I know a lot of people really love it there. And there is a specific bakery that I want to try, but it is very beloved. So whether I actually manage to get in, sit down or, you know, have anything is a different matter entirely because it is already like past midday. So maybe I'm gonna be too late. I don't know, but I'm gonna be walking over there anyway, so we shall see. But I did want to update you on the books that I'm reading because I don't want to get into another vlog just showing you everything I'm doing and not talking about reading because these are meant to be reading vlogs. So the main book that I am currently reading is Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton. If you guys didn't know, I am friends with Kelsey and I've been waiting on this book for so long and it's finally out and she is chonky. This is over 700 pages and I just did not expect that at all. This is the fourth book in the Fortuna Swan series which is a dark fantasy fae romance and I am just obsessed. I'm so addicted to the series. In the first book we are following Fortuna who is the last of her kind, her kind being a nightmare which means that she can feed off people's fears or change them. At the beginning of the first book her brother is missing and she's convinced that she can still find him even though it's been years and most people are convinced he's dead but she will not give up trying to find him and one day a mysterious man just appears at her work and tells her that he can actually tell her where her brother is as long as she agrees to marry him. It just so happens that he is a fae king of sorts and we delve into the unseelie court. This series has so much scope, like it's such a huge world. There's so many different types of creatures and you know, quite a heavy political plotline alongside the romance, alongside the fantasy. And I just really, really love it. The characters of the series are just my absolute favorite characters ever. And being four books in, I am now just so invested. I'm so happy it's a really big book as well because oh, this is gonna be so good. I am already absolutely loving this. I'm about 300 pages in and as with the previous books this is a very quick moving book but it feels like a really good pace and I can't imagine where this is going but I just love everything that I loved about the previous books. The characters, their interactions especially, there are so many like witty banter type scenes of dialogue that just have me laughing and you know actually having emotional reactions to things is very rare for me when I'm reading so the fact that the series brings that out in me is just 
Ah, oh, I love it so much. So very excited to be continuing to read this. A shorter one that I'm reading is I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. This is a really short manga which I have borrowed from G at Book Roast. I borrowed it quite a while ago now but we were talking about how I want to try more manga and she had this one, she recommended it and so she let me borrow it. In this one we are following a boy who is deaf and he very much kind of keeps away from the rest of the society within his school. He's kind of seen as an outcast of sorts until another boy appears, quite literally just drops into his life, doesn't let him be that outcast anymore and he says one particular sentence along the lines of it's not your fault that you're deaf and something about this sentence just hits him right in the very heart and soul and it says on the back that they are more than friends but less than lovers so i'm really intrigued about what this relationship is going to turn into i'm about halfway through this i'm really enjoying it i can see the kind of relationship building and it seems really sweet and just this exploration of disability within a school setting is one that i'm finding really interesting because it's already picking up on how even people who have the same disability on paper won't experience it in the same ways so for instance in this book with him being deaf everybody is assuming that he knows sign language or that sign language will be the most helpful thing for him to have whereas he actually thinks that lip reading is better but nobody accounts for that and so everybody's still being really inaccessible when they think they're actually being more helpful and it's just I don't know, I found that a really interesting point to make, so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it and seeing how it goes. I will probably finish this today, but I'm not gonna make any promises because I feel like every single time I say in a video, oh, I'm gonna do this much reading today, I fail. So we'll see how it goes. As I said, I am about to head out on a walk and answer the door. <laughs> so let's go and look at some pretty water. <laughs> this is very much today's vibe, just jumper, leggings, walking boots. I will of course also be throwing on a coat because uh, it's winter and also a lot colder near water than it is in my house obviously so we want to be prepared if we're just going to be sat outside for a while. <laughs> so it's now the 24th we have jumped quite a substantial amount of time because I both had a flare-up and also an allergic reaction which meant that I just went red all over you can still kind of see it a little bit here but it's fine <laughs> I wanted to give you a bit of a reading update and also a little tiny haul because I feel like I'm stuck in the middle of lots of bookish chaos right now <laughs> during this time period there have been two books that I have read slash I'm still currently reading that I probably won't really talk about in this video one of them being Dragonhaven by Robin Hobb this one I read for Elder Lingalong it's the second book in the Rainwild Chronicles and I pretty much read the entire thing while I was having the flare up and the allergic reaction so I just didn't end up ever saying that I was reading it but I ended up rating it two stars. This is the first Hob book that I have actively disliked <laughs> and I'm really sad about it, I really am. I don't know what it is about the series that isn't gelling with me. I think just because I have absolutely zero regard for the characters, I do not care what they're doing and so every single thing is affected by that because I don't feel any level of danger or urgency so all of the dramatic events and the events that should have brought out any kind of emotion in me just didn't hit the mark. I also just found this to feel very disjointed in the beginning but that could have been because of the publisher's choice to separate book one and two. It was incredibly repetitive 
perspective and I was just sick of hearing about certain things and it almost seemed like every character had one topic that they could not get away from. I did think it had some interesting conversations regarding sexual relationships and how to navigate those but otherwise I just didn't care and I was really disappointed by that because not only is it Robin Hobb but it's Robin Hobb with dragons and I just did not care so I was really sad about that. Unfortunately I couldn't make it to the live show that we did for that one so I wasn't there to give my full thoughts but I'll leave a link to that live show down below anyway so that you can see everybody else's thoughts and I will be giving a more in-depth review in my wrap-up when that comes soon. The other one which I won't really be talking about in this video is The Poppy War. I started this during Patreon reading sprints because this is our January to February book club pick along with Sorcery of Thorns. So I'm reading The Poppy War in January and I read this much during those sprints. I read quite a lot. I think about 200 pages. Yeah, 219 pages in one go. I haven't picked it up since just because I've been so busy and I needed to get stuff read within certain time frames. But I really enjoyed those 200 pages and I just fell straight into the book. So I'm definitely looking forward to returning to this one, but I will be doing a Patreon exclusive dedicated reading vlog for this book, which is why I'm not going to be talking about it too much in this one, just because I don't want to keep repeating my thoughts. But again, this one will be reviewed in my wrap up anyway. So the books that you guys will be hearing about in this video are these two absolute beasts. So you'll know that I am reading Beautiful Nightmares. I have been reading this for so long now but I just keep having to set it aside for other books that come first. But I'm finally back to reading this one. I'm now I think around 400 pages in out of 700 so we're over halfway, we're getting towards the finish line. Honestly, I don't mind that it's taken me so long to read because I'm really enjoying reading it, so I don't want it to be over. The pacing of this book really shows how Kelsey's writing has been improving as she's been writing these books. I've always said that the series has a lot going on in it and you do just kind of have to go along with what's going on, but while that is the case in this one, you also have a balance between slower moments and character moments and, you know, just smaller interactions that help build upon character stories. And we're also seeing the background stories of a lot more characters, which we've been been kind of waited on for a while now so it's just proven really satisfying to finally find out why certain characters act the ways that they do, where their personalities came from, things that they fear, where they've come from. I'm also finding it really interesting seeing all of the metaphorical descriptions of your inner conscious <laughs> because with Fortuna being a nightmare and somebody who can delve into people's minds to find their fears. We are seeing not only her delving into other people's minds and how their fears are being shaped, but we also do a lot of exploring of her own dreamscape and what's in there, how memories are forming. There are memories that cause trauma that are very much like hidden in the back of her mind that she's now trying to find and seeing how the descriptions of those scenes are built up is just fascinating to me. I love it so much and I also find it really impressive because I think that it's quite hard to try and create a visual thing for something that we have never seen before. We all know it exists and yet it doesn't have a physical presence so trying to create a physical presence is just proving really interesting to me. I'm really enjoying it. The steamy scenes, hmm. <laughs> They are definitely there, they are present. I am intrigued to see where the relationships go because of them. And Laurie, Laurie is just winning me over, I swear. So I'm hoping to read some more of this tonight, but I do have a pretty busy evening, so we shall see. Because I am also hoping to read some more of The Hero of Ages by Brendan Sanderson. I have not picked this up for a hot second. I am only about 100 pit. No, I'm not. I'm 268 pages into this actually, so clearly I picked it up sooner than I thought. <laughs> Because I was aiming to be there for the Dragon Haven live show, I was listening to that audiobook instead of this one, so I have put it down for a second, but I'm ready to come back into it. I honestly don't have too many thoughts on this book so far, besides I really hope that they're not going to use a certain trope, because I can see inklings of it, and if we do fall into it, Honestly, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> but I know that everybody loves the ending of this series and this book in particular, so I'm like, I don't know whether that makes me more nervous because the trope that I'm thinking of, I can't say anything because spoilers, but the trope I'm thinking of, I think if it did happen, that would make a lot of people really happy, whereas I just wouldn't. <laughs> So I'm scared now because I don't want it to be a thing. I really do think it would be a bit of a cop out if it happened. But I am enjoying just seeing it where we're going because again, I've got no clue. I don't know what kind of tone Brandon Sanderson tends to end his series on. And I can't really see what a resolution could be. So I'm enjoying just kind of, you know, 
wandering through the story at quite a steady pace. Nothing too drastic has happened yet, but I do still have quite a while to go. So while I'm tidying up this evening, I'm going to resume listening to the audiobook and hopefully get back into that one. So we've got some hefty reads going on at the minute. I am tempted to, oh, I have more books actually, hang on. <laughs> I was saying I am tempted to pick up a shorter read tonight as well if I can, just to kind of break up the big epic fantasy books that I've got on the go at the minute. And that reminded me, going quite nicely into the little haul section of this video. I recently have picked up a few books. I also just had a book mail delivery for a pre-order that I had. So part of this haul is a little bit of a sneak peek into a future video coming in February because I'm going to be doing a second video, part two, as we call it, to my come book shopping in Edinburgh with me video. I'll leave a link to the first one up here and down below, but there was absolutely no way I could cover all of Edinburgh's bookshops in one video. So I will be doing multiple parts of this. The second one is currently in progress, but I am having to do over multiple days so about half of it is done now and I do still need to wait on when I can film the second half of it but from one of the bookstores I've done so far I did pick up a couple of books so I thought I would show you a little bit of a sneak peek since I'm probably going to be reading one of these very soon anyway but the one that reminded me of that was Extraordinary by V. E. Schwab. This is a graphic novel that is part of the villain series. I think this is number 1.5 in the series so it comes directly between the two books but this one follows a girl called Charlotte. Now the villain series are actually novels so it's quite interesting that this one has been turned into a graphic novel but Schwab's Villains Duology is probably my favourite series that she's written so I was excited to see what this one is all about because within the world of the Villains Duology you can gain superhero like powers through experiencing a near-death experience and so in this one we're following a girl called Charlotte who is in a fatal crash. She awakens with supernatural abilities and then I think an organisation that is mentioned within the duology is trying to find her so we're following her story. So I might give this a read tonight and let you know my thoughts on it. But during this same bookshop trip, I did also pick up The Witchling's Girl by Helen Cogan? Cogan? Cogan, I'm gonna go with. And I was so happy to find this because I've been trying to find this book since October. I remember seeing it in somebody's video. I couldn't remember whose. I couldn't remember the title or the author's name. The only thing I could remember is that it had a blue and purple cover. And I remembered it had something to do with witches, but I didn't want to be that person who walked into a bookstore and was just like, it has a blue cover. <laughs> So I've been trying to find this book and it became a sort of game for myself because I was like I need to find this book It's gonna annoy me until I find it and then I found it This just sounds really really good because it says in a quiet street far from the river with an ancient tree growing through its walls and floors Is the house of the dead there lives the witchling healer midwife and conduit between the world of the living and the world below A witchling must give up her family and friends and spend her life alone Tending to the sick and carrying the dead down dark tunnels to the underworld Healy was born with the gift of death magic, and at the age of seven her mother abandons her to the witchling to be raised as her successor. But as Haley grows older and learns her craft, as invading armies pass through her town, people are born and die on her floor, and loyalties shift and dissolve around her. She finds it harder and harder to keep her vows and be the perfect and impassive healer. I love witch stories so much, especially when it's kind of like they're responsible for a certain aspect of a small town. I feel like that's a very specific kind of subgenre of witch stories or trope maybe. So I'm really really glad that I found this one and I am super excited. And then I have also picked up a fantasy romance book because in February I'm going to be taking part in Pharaoh Feb, so fantasy romance February, and also in Paul Lathon hosted by Jade at Jade Ray Reads. And I was trying to find a way to combine Paul of Fantasy with fantasy romance and I know that Becca did that before with very strange books. But I basically just had a quick search to see if I could find any fantasy romance books that were set within a kind of polar wintry setting and this one came up. Now I don't know how much this applies but I think it counts and honestly this was a cover buy because look at this. I don't think I've seen a prettier cover in my life. And this one is apparently a Romeo and Juliet retelling but with a better ending as it says on the back. We reached across the ocean and found each other only to lose everything at the hands of fate. Two courts, two fae, one winter, one summer. A sea between them, one forbidden love. So we follow two fairies, one of them is of the summer court, one of them is of the winter court. I believe the person from the summer court goes to the winter court, hence the polar setting, and so the romance ensues. Now again, we do have a summer court there, so I don't know how even the settings are going to be or if it will be mostly within the winter setting, 
as I am kind of hoping so that it counts but judging from the map we have more of the winter core and like icy kind of settings listed than we do summery settings so I'm hoping that that is okay but I just I saw this and immediately fell in love so I'm gonna be reading this one in February and then finally for the pre-order I ordered a special edition set from Illumicrate which I don't usually do but I couldn't resist this one because it was the Madeline Miller set. And not only that, but my favorite color. So Illumicrate created a little matching set of The Song of Achilles and Cersei in this beautiful slipcase of dark green and gold. It's absolutely stunning. And then the two books do just obviously slide out. So you have Cersei with its iconic cover. Both of them have quotes on the spine. This one is the Song of Achilles to match, which again does have a quote on the side. Both of them have beautiful end papers and both of them are signed too. So I couldn't resist getting these. I am a little bit of a book collector when it comes to my favourites and I just couldn't resist these ones. So yeah, I treated myself and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> So I need to go back to work because I'm currently on my lunch break but I'm hoping after work today I am going to continue doing YouTube work but also tidy my house while listening to an audiobook and hopefully get a little bit of physical reading in as well. I'm really trying to gain back my time for reading because I've just found myself wasting time a lot recently. I say wasting because it's debatable whether it was wasted or not but I feel like it's wasted because I have just been like scrolling through my phone aimlessly watching things that I don't really want to watch just because I've been tired recently and that's okay but I'm now ready to actually do more reading so hopefully we're going to do that. Hello I finally have some reading updates for you my god this vlog has been dragged out over so many weeks. I say that but I think it's actually only been about two weeks because I started it on the 15th and now it's the 31st of January so you know give or take. But I finally 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 finished reading Beautiful Nightmares. Oh my god this 700 page beast of a book has been devoured. I read like 200 pages, 250 pages I think in one go because I just could not put it down. I had a really lovely evening where I literally just put my phone away, made a cup of tea, curled up in my little reading corner and just sat there for hours and I finished the book. So I rated this five stars. <laughs> Is anybody surprised? Oh, I'll also show you as well. I have a new reading journal. I didn't expect to get a new one because I thought that my old one had enough pages in, but then I realized that we were looking a bit thin in terms of how much we had left. So I counted the pages and I only had about 50 pages. And considering I usually read somewhere around 90 books, it's not enough pages. So I'm gonna use those pages as extra ones if I need to kind of add in more to this. But I got a new journal, it looks like this. I got it from Waterstones and I really really like this because one the design just looks really nice. Inside the pages look like this they're nice and wide and the thing that I actually really like is at the top of the page because you can circle the dates in yourself so what I've decided to do is circle the month and the dates that I read the books between so as you can see it took me a long time to finish reading Beautiful Nightmares and then I can just put the title in the author and all of my notes and as well as you can see I've got lots of little stars at the bottom because if you flip back to the front not only do we have lots of cool information in the front but there is a pocket here which has pull out thing because this is a ruler with little stencils in and one of them is a star so I've been using that to put in my star rating and I just really like it. You've also got multiple bookmarks, there is an elasticated pen holder thing here. So all in all quite chuffed with this but to give you my thoughts on Beautiful Nightmares this book had me changing allegiances in terms of romances. Not even like you have to pick a side but like certain people won me over and <laughs> I would say I don't know if I can be won back but Kelsey just has me by a chokehold in this book and I just sway whichever way is apparent at that time so my attention is apparently fleeting and I just follow whatever the main character does so <laughs> this was definitely a fun time in terms of that there have been so many different tug of wars going on when it comes to attraction romances sexual tension all of the things going on but in this book I also just really liked that we got to see more of the backstories of the characters because everything has just been very slowly like fitting together you're learning more about the characters how they ended up the way they are trauma is also not a thing that's 
just forgotten which I really appreciate because I feel like in a lot of fantasy books the characters go through so many dramatically painful things and you don't even see them grieve half the time never mind actually deal with injuries and trauma and things whereas in this book you're given reminders that trauma doesn't just vanish because things are fine. There are tiny little instances where there's a moment's hesitation that says so much without even having to put it into words and it's not just a thing that's brushed off lightly which I like I said really appreciate because this is a dark fantasy romance book. You have lots of really really awful things happening and you can tell it's not just there for shock factor or to make the series dark. It's very well balanced and this book really had me theorizing. I have so many theories now. <laughs> I'm suspicious of everybody. I don't know where the series is going but you can see with every book within the series that the scope just keeps getting bigger and bigger and with this one in particular you can really see how the series has expanded and how big the problems are getting because in the very first book you just have like one issue that you're trying to solve but then with each book as you discover more and more about this world the scope just gets bigger and bigger, the problems get bigger and you can tell that we're going to end up on a really epic scale. I'm so excited to see it. I'm so impatient for the next book. This one has only just come out and I'm just like, I want the next one. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I think this one is the best one in the series so far. I think I have rated most of them, if not all of them, five stars, but this one is like very solidly, not even any doubt. I don't have any fault with this. Absolutely adored it. Yes. <laughs> To break up some of the heftier reading, I did also pick up Extraordinary by V.E. Schwab. This one is book 1.5 within the villain series, so it comes right between Vicious and Vengeful. And I was quite intrigued about this one because I didn't really know why Victoria Schwab had decided to do this in a graphic novel format instead of a novel, especially because she has said that she's writing a third villain's book. So it just seems a bit random to put a graphic novel in between some of them. She has said, however, that if she was to create more of these stories, she would do them as point five novellas in between each of the books so if another one was to come out it would be between book two and three and it wouldn't be a direct continuation it would follow different characters so I think she just kind of wants to expand the world by adding in more characters and more stories of Eos Extraordinaries and I really liked how this was done I didn't know what to expect going into it but I found it quite interesting seeing the snippets from the first book Vicious because you kind of have like a whistle stop tour of the story to catch you up on what you need to know if you were just reading this one or if you needed a reminder of how the whole Eo thing works and also a reminder of our main characters Victor and Eli since they are the two that the series kind of revolves around and it was really interesting to see what Schwab deemed as important to put into here as a reminder and how she could summarise their story and their relationship in such a short amount of time because it is only a tiny section of this graphic novel before we go back to Charlotte's story and how she fits into it all. I really like the art style, I think that it suited the story so well because it was quite sharp and edgy looking and I do think that it suits the tone of the story and it was also quite interesting to see the depiction of Victor and Eli through the artwork because we haven't really had like a confirmed visual image of them so that was really interesting. One thing I will say is that this was remarkably similar to Sydney's story in the Vicious series already, at least in terms of group dynamics and the characters who are involved. Just the group dynamic, the way that Charlotte ends up falling into a specific group of people, the character archetypes were very very similar and even down to the description of Charlotte and Sydney seemed quite similar Similar, so I kind of feel like maybe this should have been Sydney's story but either way I enjoyed seeing this one. I am a little bit confused about why this isn't going to have a follow-up. I believe Schwab has said that we will see more of Charlotte in the third actual novel of the villain series but they have said that there isn't going to be a direct graphic novel continuation which is very strange with how this book ends and I also think that there needed to be just a little bit more expansion when it came to the EO side of things in here and explaining that. I don't know I had a few faults with it but I did enjoy it. I rated it four stars. Would be very intrigued to see what more graphic novels within this universe would include. And finally, Hero of Ages. I have, I think, my audiobook says I have two hours left of this, so maybe two and a half hours, and I'm determined to finish it tonight to get it into my January wrap-up. I need to film it tomorrow, so I need to finish this today so that I can give my final thoughts, see what this ending is all about that people rave about. I really don't know if I'm going to enjoy this ending as much as everybody else does. I just honestly don't have that many opinions on this book so far, and considering how many pages it is, I'm a little bit disappointed by that, I'm not gonna lie. I do think, however, that it could partially be my own fault because it was so long between me reading The Final Empire and the second and third book 
that I don't think I have quite as much of a connection with the main characters as I would have done had I just read them closer together. So I think that might be partially my own fault and maybe if I reread them again in the future I'll end up falling absolutely in love with them but at the minute I just don't really have that connection. I am however enjoying reading about how it's all coming together and seeing the people getting closer and closer to figuring out what's going on, especially because this is the first time I'll see any kind of ending when it comes to Brandon Sanderson's works. So it's quite nice to see how he inches towards this conclusion of sorts. My favourite character at the minute is Cezed. I can't explain why something about him has just won me over. Everybody else I'm honestly not too bothered about so. <laughs> but I am determined to finish this tonight and I will come back in and give you an update and finish this vlog having read the two massive chunky books that for some reason I decided was a good idea to read at the same time. <laughs> it is done! Yes! This feels so good to have finished two 700 page books in one week. I mean, obviously I didn't read them in one week, but it still feels good. I'm taking it. And do you know what? Fair played, Brandon Sanderson. Fair played. That ending felt like the sort of ending that deserves a slow clap, a slow close of the book, and just uh, acceptance. That's all I have to say right now. It's 1am. I'm knackered. I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> all right, folks, it's the next day. Let's wrap up these thoughts because one, we finished a series. Oh my god been so long in the making but we got there. And I do have to admit I can see why everybody is really satisfied by this ending because while it wasn't perfect it is one of those where it's like I don't really know how it could have ended any other way and I did kind of feel like I just had to slow clap and be like you know what fair. I honestly thought I was going to rate Hero of Ages three stars, but I actually gave it four stars because of the ending and because there were so many conversations going on throughout this book that I just found were really interesting and took this book to another depth that just made it so much more intricate and authentic, I guess, because there were so many conversations about religion and faith and what to believe when everything is just going wrong. Also conversations about morality and different points of view, how people are interconnected with each other. And it was just fascinating to read all of that. And I do think Think that it was partially my own fault as I said before as to why I didn't have such a reaction with this final book as a lot of people do because I did put the books down for a while so quite complicated thoughts I didn't absolutely adore it as a lot of people seem to but I will be trying out more of Brandon Sanderson's work I do think that his later ones might appeal to me more but I also don't feel any sense of urgency to get around to reading more of his books anytime soon I do want to I just don't know what kind of timeline we're going to be dealing with so I I am happy at least that I have finished that series. Definitely feels like an accomplishment and we can finally wrap up this vlog how chaotic this reading has been in January. Oh my god, thank you for sticking with me. I don't even know if the chaotic energy of it is going to reflect in this vlog because I cannot remember for the life of me what I've documented and what I have. Hopefully it at least makes sense and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you made it this far into the video then please leave, leave a dear emoji. I don't know why, but why not? <laughs> But for now, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 